Welcome out there in television land and happy new year to another edition of It's Your Health. I'm with my bride, Kathleen, coming to you from the new studios at the Laurel Mall of Sam Sun Productions. The guy is really spreading out. Uh, we'll be right back after this brief commercial message. Remember, you're talking and listening to It's Your Health, your leader in healthcare information. Make sure you check with your healthcare provider before doing any of the things that we talk about here on It's Your Health. We'll be right back. Hey, get a load of that handsome young man. That's our Donnie, right, sweetheart? That's our Donnie, and he's wearing those beautiful blue boots. And that's what you should get for your dog if you're taking him out in the snow because the, that ice is not good for him and neither is the salt that they put down. So either boots or you've got to rinse him off when he comes in out of the cold. Um, for you, remember when you're going to go out and take care of the snow, layer up, stay warm. And speaking of the ice. But uh, wait, what I'm not finished. <laughs> oh, let me uh, take a nap here. Okay. <laughs> Push the snow, don't lift it and put cooking spray on your shovel because it'll keep the snow from sticking. And finally, I'm almost done, take it slow. Okay, it's your turn. I can talk now? Yes, oh, you may well, talk. Oh, thank you, sweetheart. You're welcome. Uh, keep in mind that when you bend over and you uh, pick something up or shovel it, your back sees three times the amount of the weight that you're pulling or lifting. For example, if you're uh, lifting five pounds of snow, your back is actually seeing 15 pounds of it. So that's how we kind of injure our, our backs as well. And when I used to work the emergency rooms, it was typical that people unfortunately came in with heart attacks and strokes from overdoing it because they're doing something they don't accustomedly do all the time. Or find somebody else to do it. Right. So are we going to talk about this uh, cast you have here? Well, that's what happens when you slip on the ice. Yes, you should have been wearing your boots. Like I was. Okay. I was wearing boots, Import and I slipped anyway. I I'd like to make an important point. She fell on the ice, what, three weeks ago? Yes. Complained of pain because she complains. And I of course, do not complain. I ignored it. And uh, of course, he did ignore it. Eventually got an x-ray, which was normal, which again, we Made ignored. him ignore me. <laughs> but she had persistent pain. And uh, you have to remember we treat patients and not results. So the fact that she still had pain, she saw her doctor, who isn't me, and he ordered an MRI, and lo and behold, she had a fracture. So the point is, if you still have persistent symptoms, you gotta push us to take you to a level that's a little higher in terms of trying to find out why you have the pain, because pain is nature's warning that something is wrong. And it was definitely painful. So something was wrong. So that was our first headline right there. Very good. Okay, let's go to the next one. Should senior citizens take aspirin daily to prevent heart attacks or strokes? This is an issue that has come up a lot. More than one half of Americans age 45 to 75 take aspirin daily to prevent a stroke or heart attack though they don't have a history of stroke or heart attack. Is this a good or bad idea? Well, if we're back to the future, uh, when we first started practicing, virtually everybody took a baby aspirin, 81 milligrams, to lower the risk of stroke and heart attack. However, in today's 2022, uh, it's uh, advised that you do not take the baby aspirin unless you are told to by your doctor, unless you have a good reason for example, prior stroke, prior heart attack. To take it as a preventative type of thing, you're asking for a GI bleed, and we don't want you to be having GI bleeding. So as of today, uh, don't take a baby aspirin unless you're advised to do so. If you have no history of stroke or myocardial infarction, we believe that the answer to taking an aspirin is no. There it is, you heard it. Okay. And speaking of no, uh, we worry, of course, about in this area, 
what are the number one cancers or lung cancers? And everyone says, well, it's smoking, it's smoking. secondhand smoking, but the coal region has a unique property, Problem. yes, of uh, lung cancer, and it is? Radon. Radon gas, long-term exposure to this colorless, odorless gas is the second most common cause of lung cancer. It is, it is unbelievable. And uh, we, prior to uh, moving into our new home, we had it tested for radon, and it was quite high, quite Very honestly. High. And so the people who were selling the house had to put in this radon removing. It took a whole day, and it's a whole system throughout the house. And uh, armed us with a radon detector that we're going to show you a little bit later. Mm -hmm. And it uh, tells us exactly what the radon levels are. Now, you out there in television land can find out if you have a radon problem. You can go, I think, to the hardware stores. You can go online. You can go practically anywhere. And for just a couple dollars, you can get something that will determine if you have radon and how much in your house you put it in your basement set it there and then go back and check it I think in about a week and it will tell you if you need to call somebody to come in and do something about it and there are professionals who are qualified to take care of it and guarantee their work yeah it, it's it's it, the coal region for some reason uh, it just oozes out of the basement and I was really surprised that uh, we had the radon levels that we had. Well, actually, the northeastern part of the United States is known for having radon. Right. So go get one. So are you going to show the radon detector? If you wish. Am uh, I allowed to? Absolutely. OK, here's our radon detector. And right now, the studio is in a very uh, dangerous area. We better hurry up and leave. What's it at? <laughs> What's it at? It's at. Um, 2.86. It's a that's great. That is great. That's a terrific number to be at. Okay. If you're at four or less, you're perfect. If you're a little bit over four, you want to keep watching it. If you're way over four, you need to open doors and windows because that helps. Alrighty. Okay. S that's everything we have to say right now. Really? I thought we were going to talk about broken bones and osteoporosis. Well, we are going to talk about osteoporosis. I almost forgot. But it's right here. And you know why? Because it overwhelmed me. Listen to these numbers. Heart attack, 500,000. Stroke, 200,000. Breast cancer, 200,000. Big numbers. Weight. Osteoporosis factor, fractures, two million. It's not even close. Right, and what we're talking about are, uh, is a disease that is being under recognized and obviously undiagnosed and untreated. So you out there in television land, uh, especially our women who are postmenopausal, Medicare will give you a DEXA imaging scan, which is a picture of your spine and your hips. And, and it's painless. Every two years you get it, and you can actually find out where you are in terms of osteoporosis. Great treatment out there to treat and uh, hopefully prevent fractures of the spine and hip. Can, can be game-changing in our, in our lives. So again, under-recognized, under-treated, under-diagnosed. Get out, out there and get your DEXA scan. I usually morph it in when women go for mammograms, by the way. So it's not only, so it can be tested and it can be treated. So this is something that can be taken care of. No doubt, no doubt. And speaking of taking care of, we're going to be right back after this brief commercial message. Remember, you're watching It's Your Health, the fastest 30 minutes in television history. We'll be right back after this brief commercial message. Welcome back to the second segment of It's Your Health. Philip Benio with his bride, bringing you the latest and the greatest. Absolutely. Get a load of what's in that cough medicine. Everybody's going to want that cough medicine. Look at the ingredients. Alcohol, uh, cannabis, chloroform. <laughs> That'll take care of your cough. And morphine. 
So uh, sign me up. Perfect combination. Yeah, absolutely. A real cocktail. Wow. So should we go on to headlines? Please. Masking for COVID is associated with decreased emergency department visits for non-COVID illnesses and respiratory conditions. Increasing the use of masking is associated with a decrease in emergency room visits for viral illnesses and asthma and COPD. You know, it's not too surprising. Uh, I kind of have COVID fatigue, quite honestly. I'm sick of these masks. Hopefully as this year moves on and we get into warmer weather, this virus is gonna peter out, but probably still be a part of our lives. But if you recall uh, yesteryear, looking at magazines that had Japanese, Chinese people wearing masks during the uh, winter, you'd say, what are they doing that for? And what has been discovered is that we are all using masks to keep away COVID, but what it has also done as a side effect, if you will, a beneficial one, is cut down the amount of influenza that we see. It cuts down on the emergency room visits for viral illnesses and exacerbations of COPD. And so asthma? It may actually be something that uh, we should probably get used to, even though I hate it, uh, wearing masks uh, each winter. It's going to cut down on a lot of bad things. Wow, and cut down on reduced visits to emergency rooms and reduce the, the employee stress. Oh, absolutely, no doubt. And speaking of stress, these pictures are awful. Yeah, they're, uh, they're from the latest edition of uh, American Family Physician. And these are mycotic fungal toenails in oh. all types of shapes and forms. They are thickened, they are painful, they are very difficult to cut. And uh, what causes them? It's a fungus that gets under the nails. Uh, sometimes if you're a diabetic, you have these. Uh, it may come with just aging and not seeing a podiatrist and getting proper nail care. They claim if you walk outdoors a lot, uh, barefoot, you can end up getting these kind of things, almost like going to the gym. But the, the part of the problem is they are very difficult to treat. They, you can take a pill for several months. However, that pill has a fair amount of side effects to the liver. They do have topical agents. Uh, Penlac is one that comes to mind. Insurances sometimes don't pay for it, and it only works maybe a third of the time. I think prevention is the key, and I think you should see a podiatrist so you take care of your nails, especially when you're elderly. It's kind of difficult to bend down and, and clip your nails. Uh, so go see your podiatrist, get them clean, get them taken care of so you don't end up like this. So maybe you go and just get your nails done every couple of months? I'm not sure exactly what Medicare uh, is able to pay for. I think you should see a podiatrist at least once a year. Oh. If you're a diabetic, at least uh, get your toenails looked at. That's very important nail care for diabetics. Let's talk about uh, our phones. Now what I have here, when we used to do our uh, ghost chasing. Ghost hunting was so much fun. We brought along this meter which measured the amount of microwave energy out there, which of course ghosts emit. But here's Supposedly. what I, here's what I want to show you, which I thought is very interesting. And that is everybody has a cell phone. And we the, hold it up to our ear. If uh, we dial some a phone number, look what happens to this uh, microwave. So you're, this is picking up microwave energy emitted by a cell phone, which by the way, you're holding to your head. Okay. How so, many times a day you're holding it to your head? And so the point is these uh, cell phones emit microwaves. We don't know what they do, but I wouldn't hold this very close to my head because uh, of the same reason you wouldn't want to stand in front of a microwave in your kitchen and get exposed to these uh, God knows what they do waves. So that's that's why you always use the, the speaker, speaker phone. phone. Right. You never put it next to your head. No, I don't. I don't. So there's part of our show and tell today. I hope you enjoyed that. Wow. Wow. OK, we'll talk about physical activity now and health. Let's talk the talk and walk the walk. What each of us does in our daily life 
profoundly impacts our short and long-term health and quality of life. Among the many important practices that each of us can adopt, there is no single lifestyle habit that is more powerfully associated with improved short and long-term health and quality of life than regular physical activity. Reduction of risk for chronic fatigue, chronic diseases, and it's a cornerstone for the prevention and treatment of many diseases. Well, there's no doubt. If you uh, don't use it, you lose it. And it's particularly difficult during our six months of winter up here in northeastern Pennsylvania. Uh, it's very easy to uh, put on a couple of pounds, especially in this COVID time. You've heard of the freshman 15. When people go off to college, they gain 15 pounds. There's a COVID 15. Virtually everybody I'm seeing has gained 15 pounds over this uh, COVID time. So now uh, we need to gear up and get into some forms of physical activity. Go low, go slow. Walking is excellent. Uh, you can't really beat it, quite honestly. I don't know if you have any other information to give us? Well, they're saying now that we've cut back on smoking and people have gotten better about not smoking, the big issue is sitting. We're sitting too much. And because we're sitting so much, it's affecting our health. And so what we need to do is every 30 minutes, get up and move. Walk around the house, walk up the steps, do something to stop sitting because sitting has become the big problem now that we have been able to get through a lot of the smoking problem. Right, when we can th consider what happened to our uh, folks yesteryear, I mean, it was unbelievable uh, how much walking was done. Uh, of course, now everybody has to run around in a car and uh, nobody does any walking, right? Listen to this, compared with those who are physically active, the risk of cardiovascular disease in sedentary individuals is 150 to 240 percent higher. That's a lot. Right, and it almost equals the same risk of smoking. A sedentary lifestyle puts you almost on the same level health-wise as someone who smokes. It doubles the risk of heart disease. Speaking of smoking, we are smoking through this show. Okay. That's unbelievable. Uh, we'll be right back after this brief commercial message. Remember, you're watching It's Your Health, your leader in healthcare information. We'll be right back. Welcome to the final section of It's Your Health. Here I am with my wonderful husband. And you see the picture of us sleeping with Donnie. And poor Donnie can't sleep because my husband snores. So he's going to need to leave the room so that Donnie and I can get a good night's sleep. But we will go on and talk about some important things right now. And an important one is chemotherapy-induced arrhythmia. It's under-recognized and under-treated. Cancer is one of the leading causes of death worldwide, and cancer patients are at a greater risk of cardiovascular disease because of the side effects of oncological treatments. Tell us about that. Well, we have uh, heart disease as one of the number one killers. Of, uh, of us out there. And then you have cancer, of course, which is uh, right behind it. So it's not unusual that the treatment for this might evoke cardiac arrhythmias, which are skipped heartbeats. Uh, skipped heartbeats come in a variety of different uh, areas. We may see them as palpitations. But um, what this article is meant to bring out is if you're out there and you're getting chemotherapy, you need to tie up with a cardiologist because some of the agents that you're given can induce abnormal heart rhythms. They can cause heart damage. Uh, again, it's unfortunately part of the side effect of, of chemotherapy sometimes, unpredictable. But a lot of people are not thinking about it and they're not really being proactive about it. So 
Oh, because they're busy thinking about their cancer. Of course. So uh, again, I would uh, stress that if you're uh, out there and you're getting chemotherapy, whether or not you have heart disease or not, but especially if you have heart disease, you've got to get your cardiologist involved as part of your healthcare team. And speaking of heart disease, what about this little thing right here? Isn't this amazing? I'm going to talk about cardiac arrhythmias. We are going to see what your heart is doing right now. You and how are we going to do that? You're going to put your finger on just one index finger. That's it. Put it down. All right. Are you thinking good thoughts? Because uh, this can read your mind, too, you know. <laughs> okay. Let's just watch and see what happens here. Um, you should be seeing a heart beat. And in 30 seconds, this will tell me that you are not having a cardiac arrhythmia. It will not diagnose heart disease. It will not diagnose a heart attack. It'll tell me what you're thinking. It will not. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> uh, in either event, your heart is nice and normal. And isn't that great technology to, to have? This little thing can do that. It just did, sweetheart. And it'll tell me if there's a problem. Correct. Wonderful. Isn't that amazing? That is amazing. And somebody gave you that for Christmas. Somebody must love you. Oh, well, it must be Donnie, I guess. I don't know. Well, Donnie does love you. Moving right along. Okay, we'll move along to the quad pill. Uh, a quad pill containing quarter doses of four blood pressure lowering medications was more so. effective than an initial treatment for hypertension. Hypertension, one of the most common, uh, perhaps under-recognized and under-treated silent killers out there. So when we diagnose someone with high blood pressure, we put them on a blood pressure pill, and most of the time it works. But sometimes it doesn't, and we have to add on a second agent. And patients kind of get a little miffed about that, saying, well, I'm already on a pill. Why don't you just increase the dose? Well, increasing the dose may simply increase the side effects. So I kind of look at blood pressure as an antipasto, and that is to say you put a little of this, a little of that, and you reduce the side effects. And the purpose of this article says that they took a quarter of the four most common blood pressure medications, diuretics, beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, and what are called ACE inhibitors or ARBs, and they put minute portions of these four pills together and it worked better than anything else. So this quad pill is might be something for the future, but it illustrates the fact so that... So it might be out someday. It, it might be out someday, uh, but they have proven that a little of this, a little of that uh, will win the day for you with less side effects. You know what's coming up? Uh, no. What's coming up? Our anniversary. Oh. Do you want to talk about jewelry? Uh, yeah, well, um, what are you getting me? <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to talk about a certain kind of jewelry. Okay. Well, what's interesting about jewelry is, of course, it has heavy metals in it, or metals themselves, like nickel, cadmium, aluminum. Oh. Uh, things that can get absorbed and be potentially toxic. Well, there's a company out there and we're going to show it on your screen here that you can sign up for jewelry that is uh, less toxic than what's out there commercially. Well, that's really interesting. And it's, uh, it's healthy. And speaking of which, there's a picture here for, from our wedding. Do you see it? Yeah, when was that? 29 years ago. You see how darker my hair was then? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. And you see, look, there's Dr. Dan right in the front. The little tiny boy there <laughs> is Dr. Dan. All our children. And Phil, uh, our, our PA, is all the way in the back. Isn't it? And there's Joe and Anna and Brislin and us. 29 years. You know, that's, that's a life sentence, you know. Groucho Marx said, said that when he got married, he was married by the judge and he should have asked for the jury. Do we have anything else to talk about? Um, well, we can talk about um, Viagra. It uh, was initially promoted as a blood pressure pill, believe it or not, Viagra. What it does is redistribute blood flow to the pelvis. And it's used medically for conditions like pulmonary hypertension, again, a hypertensive uh, agent. 
Uh, the big thing about Viagra is that you should take it on an empty stomach, no alcohol. So don't have dinner and drinks and have that for dessert because you'll be disappointed. So uh, that's one way of ending the show on a... And consider your partner and what they have to go through while, when you're on Viagra. Be considerate. Okay. Okay. All right. That's good advice. All right. I think so, too. <laughs> Don't do any of the things that we talk about here on It's Your Health, <laughs> by the way. Okay. Again, the fastest half hour. Thank you for allowing us to come into your homes and entertain and hopefully inform you. Hopefully. Remember, you're watching It's Your Health on Samsung Productions, the best in the land.